The power to be of benefit to ourselves and others lies within our own mind, within an open intelligence. Open intelligence and mind are synonymous. To be introduced to open intelligence, a simple way to do that is to stop thinking just for a moment. When you stop thinking, what remains? Alertness, clarity, cognizance, the power to know. It's not a complicated description. You don't need to understand that your intelligence is there. So whether we're thinking or not thinking, open intelligence is also present. It's primary. Open intelligence is required to know anything, to perceive anything. Open intelligence is inseparable from all of its data. The data are the thoughts we experience, the emotions, um, all the different bodily sensations, people, places and things, objects, animate, inanimate, concepts. We simply call it data. Data, thoughts, emotions, sensations, whatever it is, inseparable from open intelligence. Like the color blue is inseparable from the sky or the breeze is inseparable from the air. Whether the data is positive, whether the stream is a positive flow, or if it's a negative flow, in short moments, many times, emphasize open intelligence, it starts to be revealed that all data, they're equal and even to, in, of, as, and through open intelligence. Now we haven't grown up with this way of looking at everything. The way we've been trained and the way we've taken on this training to use our mind is to focus in on the data, the people, the places, the things, the thoughts, the emotions, sensations, and trying to make sense out of it all, trying to accumulate positive, trying to do something about the neutral, like boredom and whatever, and then all the negative, trying to do something with that. So if you consider in your, in your own experience over the years of trying to do this, how, where has that led you? Like of course you've had great experiences and you've had other experiences that haven't been so great. But just looking deeply, what does that do on a daily basis? We spend all of our time and energy focused in on the, the data. Like for decision making or you know, when we're in an intimate relationship and we want to support the person we have all the thoughts, the emotions, sensations, and we place all of the energy and attention into figuring out, like, what do I do about this? What's the best decision to make? How do I support my partner when they're either depressed or sad or angry or frustrated? So there is a lot of data on a daily basis. You can consider, just look at how many different experiences you have. Look at your thought flow. One minute, you're paying attention, the next minute you're drifting off into the fantasy of whatever your fantasy might be of the day. And then you come back and you're paying attention and then you get irritated and then, you know, it's just the flow. It's ceaseless. It's countless. So if you place all of your attention on it, it it's exhausting. If you're, you know, trying to be mindful of everything that's going on and then trying to shift somehow positive into, I mean, negative into positive, it's a lot of effort. You spend your whole day sorting all of this data. You have a full-time job and you didn't even sign up for it and you don't get paid for it. <coughs> so what to do about that? What are we without data? Well, yeah, we don't have to go to an extreme now and say that, well, I'm not my data or there's only data or there's no data. It's open intelligence and data inseparable, like the color blue in the sky. And the practice of short moments of emphasizing open intelligence is what is important. And that will apply to every single question we have. Like we're, we've grown up intellectually using everything. Like we want to know cause and effect. So this is just an opportunity actually to give that whole uh, career of trying to figure everything out through logic and reason and deduction and everything. Just take a break from that for a short moment. Repeat that many times, a short moment of complete relaxation. Acknowledge 
open intelligence that's actually crystal clear, unaffected by the data. So just like the sky is unaffected by anything that occurs within the sky, the sky is never affected by thunder showers. The sky is never affected by birds flying in it, or rainbows, or even the pollution. The sky remains unaffected. And so too, open intelligence remains unaffected by positive, negative, and neutral data. And they're inseparable. Like um, images in a crystal ball or a mirror. They're totally inseparable. They're not two different things. Right? You wouldn't say, oh, that image of me in the mirror, it's a separate thing. It's, it's its own entity. It has its own nature. It doesn't. The only thing that can truly be said about data is they have no independent nature. There's nothing really there that gives them anything. They are an appearance of open intelligence. So what does this mean practically? Well, for me it was more about the instruction. Okay, I can Actually, I can instinctively understand that in the briefest of moments. I can really get that nothing has an independent nature. Just, and you can think about it logically, too. It's like, wow, there, yeah, there's really nothing at the basis of anything other than pure space. But instinctively starting to see this and practicing short moments of emphasizing open intelligence, repeating it many times, open intelligence becomes more obvious. The unaffected, clear, intelligence at the basis of everything becomes more and more obvious to us. And we don't even need to name it anything. In my experience, when, before I came to the training, I did place all of my energy and attention on thoughts, emotions, sensations, and it was very distracting and uh, effortful. What I started to see is that just like planets and stars in the sky are outshone when the sun rises, so the more I relied on open intelligence and stopped placing all of the energy and attention on data, they started to become outshone, where I didn't recognize them as much. I wasn't getting in there and trying to think about it and figure it out. So just practically that's how it started happening. So when I was concerned or worried and under mutter of worry, I applied short moments of allowing the thoughts to be as they are, not needing to change them into positive not needing to avoid them or choosing to not indulge in them also, like making a commitment for a short moment. I'm not going to indulge in this description that's coming up. So we can all actually take that commitment on and we do it short moment by short moment. Again, not needing to do anything with the data, like you wouldn't do anything with the breeze in the air. You're not trying to manipulate it. So that's, you know, that's similar to allowing data to be as it is, but the data, they feel more like firecrackers or something that really demands our attention. Decision-making or when your partner is maybe needing support and you, the urge to f want to fix them is so strong, like what do you do? Well, again, we want to know what, what about us is completely stable regardless of the flow of data. So we check it in our own experience. Okay, when I'm feeling depressed or sad or angry, I can test out the training. Short moments of allowing it to be as it is. Short moments of complete relaxation and recognizing that mental and emotional stability is present even with this flow of data. And then I'm actually okay. I, ha I can have more and more access to the intelligence that knows what it needs to do in each, in each moment. And by doing that, then you know that it's possible for other people as well. I, in my own experience, what naturally came about is I couldn't see myself as a victim of all, all of my data anymore. You know, it was just stories I'd been projecting and I could see that about others, so I wasn't interested in proliferating a story of victimhood. It was more about how can I embody open intelligence and not be at the whim of my data through my commitment to showing up and relying on the four mainstays, and thus I can be of support to another person. I can ask them simple questions, can I do anything for you? Rather than, you know, continuing on with the story of them being a victim. So just very naturally you start to see how to use your speech in relationship where 
conversations are no longer about people being victims of one another and things. And it's more about, well, we can use our mind in a different way. Not focusing in on the descriptions and opening it up, seeing that we do have a balanced view. A balanced view of being on the top of a mountain where you see everything clearly. And maybe you can't pinpoint, like, well, what is that stuff down there? Is that a village or is it a person? Or... So that's also helpful when we, you know, we may not know what our answer needs to be for, you know, like making decisions. If decision making comes up that we have to make an important decision and it's consuming a lot of our time and energy, just apply the practice. Short moments of letting the data be as it is, resting body and mind completely, and showing up in the training settings for further assurance in open intelligence rather than getting lost in data. And that's more and more by doing this, you will have the answers you need. You won't have the clear, crystal clear answer when we're just in the, the valley of descriptions. We'll just see more and more data and forget that it, it too is this open intelligence. All the data are the shining forth of open intelligence. We've labeled them as friends and foes our entire lives and we're starting to see that they're all like old and dear friends. Anger, hatred, depression, desire. All of these things that we have taken to be so afflictive and troublesome, we begin to allow them to be as they are and see that they don't have this power to make us have the worst day ever. We let it be as it is and gradually they become more and more obvious to be the shine of open intelligence, a, a beneficial energy. And showing up is its really powerful. Um, I just realized in my own life that if I didn't show up, I'd be lost in the valley of descriptions. I'd be trudging along, trying to find my way to the top of the mountain on my own, hacking through a jungle of data with a dull machete, getting caught up in the vines and just like, oh, I can't figure this out. What is short moments? I'm still angry. I'm still acting on my anger. I don't know what to do with my life. I, you know, these... <laughs> And that's what, kind of what it's like. So I was like, well, okay, look at those around me who do seem like they're really confident, shining, taking a powerful stance for all of humanity and seeing what, what do they do. And showing up, it's so amazing because the more of us that do show up, it provides so many possibilities for, for everyone else. You know, like we have this center. This is due to people showing up. And that means that more and more people can be introduced to a powerful way, the most powerful way to use our mind. It's so amazing, so incredible. And then to then, for everyone to um, see how they can further this, like how they can share it with their friends. Showing up can mean, you know, participating every single day in as much trainings as you'd like, or, or, maybe showing up once a week for a training or coming every single day for service or coming a few times. It's really, it's, yeah, it's, it's our own choice. And I mean, I can only see the immense value of showing up and I see it in everyone who does show up, just the, the maturity, the openness, the life satisfaction and flourishing that I see in people when they continue to show up and rely on their most comprehensive intelligence. Your life doesn't get worse. You may experience more data, but your life for sure doesn't degrade. If anything, you're more comfortable with anything and everything. Your gift strengths and talents become more and more alive. And that, yeah, that just opens up the possibility of how other people can show up in providing trainings in different locations, having it available in different formats. You know, children will learn differently than a setting like this through music, through, through our demonstration. Like if we have companies and we're hiring people, or if we are an employee and we work within a company, people will notice 
something about us that's totally easeful and powerful and inviting. So the power of showing up is, is very obvious and people will come along at their own pace. There's no rush to in that. Yeah, and we can't force anyone to show up either. Maybe you could drag them to the open meetings, but it isn't always the best tactic. And then startling your mind, fearing losing this practice. Well, you'll, you'll never ever forget open intelligence once you've been introduced to it. Even if you weren't interested in this practice and, you know, the introduction, stop thinking what remains this powerful, innate intelligence that you wasn't birthed and, and it won't die. You'll never forget that. And then if you find yourself getting lost in the jungle of data, then just remember, oh yeah, I can join a clarity call, I can write to my trainer, I can listen some of the, to some of the downloads, I can go hang out with community. I, you have so many options, it's like unavoidable to be outside of open intelligence is warm and brave. And the fear that arises, fear will come up for all of us, we'll be afraid of something, that's fine. Remember short moments of allowing fear to be as it is. And maybe you need to repeat that many times, or if I'm afraid of something, I might just listen to a talk, and that helps me just relax the incessant need to describe the fearful descriptions. It's so potent. Yeah, so we kind of start to see, we're not trying to fix other people, but we for sure want them to know the nature of their mind, and the best way is through our demonstration. There's nothing to fix in the data. You can't fix them anyway. It's not like you get in there with a wrench and tweak it or polish it. They just, they arise and they self-release. Anger, it comes up, it feels like something real, but when you let it be as it is, it self-releases naturally. You didn't have to do anything for the anger to release. And more and more you, you prove that to yourself, and every short moment you rely on, you just see, well, that's just really the case. I can't hold on to my positive data either, so I don't need to try any longer. And by so doing, you just more and more have complete enjoyment 